Hello, this is Jay, aka The Naked One. Welcome to another Nefarious 4 production. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Built Techno 2.0. Q review. Hey guys, let me introduce you to my friend, the Built Techno 2.0. This has been my buddy for the last year. He has about 4,564 miles and I figured I'm about to retire him, but this is a great time to give you a review. All right, so background really quick. I wanted to buy a helmet when I first started getting into riding motorcycles that was the best bang for my buck. I didn't want to go spend $300 on a comm system um, like a Senna or a Cardo and I didn't want to spend two, three, four, a thousand dollars on a helmet. Find out that I don't like riding motorcycles and then it's sitting in the corner of my closet with the rest of the clothes I buy that I don't like to wear. So I figured after doing some research this would probably be the best bang for my buck. And to be honest it served this purpose in the beginning. It got me on my motorcycle, got me out, I had some type of protection, and I was happy. As I got more and more into motorcycling, it was time for me to upgrade, and you're gonna see why once I give you a review. Now, the Build Techno 2.0 is also, I think, made by the same company that made the Speed and Strength SS1300. If you look up pictures of the SS1300 or the visor for it and things like that, it is the same exact helmet with two differences. One, there is no comm system on the 1300. Two, the 1300 has an ECE rating, which is not on the Build Techno 2.0. The Build Techno 2.0 only has a DOT rating, and I have checked all the paperwork. It's only DOT on this helmet. And just because he looks like his twin, doesn't mean they're exactly the same. But with that being said, let's talk about this guy. This guy is a polycarbonate uh, round oval, which it's more round. And that's gonna be that's gonna affect my comfort because it turns out I'm an intermediate oval. I didn't know the differences and like what it was when I bought a helmet. I just wanted to get on my bike as soon as possible and bought a helmet right away. So here, here goes. Let's go with comfort. Very comfortable helmet. Cheek pads, stupid soft. Tempur-Pedic soft cheek pads. Very, very soft. Um, moisture wicking material. The material is very well done. The stitching is really, really fine. I didn't have any issues with it. Um, simple, easy in and out. Three snaps, two Velcros, and it does have a chin curtain. Now, I live in Central Florida. I sweat like no tomorrow. It would whisk away the moisture really, really well. However, one problem. After a while of riding around in the helmet, these very, very soft cheek pads eventually start to give way and the helmet starts to shift on my head. I think that coupled with the fact that it's a round oval affected um, how the helmet would sit on my, on my head. It wasn't tight and snug after a while. In the beginning, always tight and snug, but towards the end or the middle of the ride, I started getting saggy face, okay? It would just drop um, right to my brow and I'd, you'd see me at lights picking up my face, basically. So every time I'm at a light or, or while riding, I would have to pick it up. The other thing is, when I was on the highway, I would get dreaded bobblehead. It would jump up and down. I, I must have looked like this while riding on a motorcycle. Um, the other thing is it's not aerodynamic at all. So when I'm riding around, I'm getting hit by the wind. I, I ride a naked. So, okay, that's usual. My head is getting whipped around. Even when I tucked, I could still feel the forces. So it's not an aerodynamic helmet. Um, a lot of shift, a lot of play, and definitely not aerodynamic. Makes for an uncomfortable ride. Uh, now, let's talk about venting. Venting is actually pretty cool on this helmet. Um, I have two chimney vents and one chin vent. On the back, I'm gonna have 
two, one exhaust here and two exhausts over here on the sides, two passive exhausts. So you cannot control the, the rear, you can only control the top and the, the chimneys and the chin vent. Now, the, the EPS is channeled, so it does flow air through. But one thing that I do like about this helmet is that the visor system, the visor has detents. So I could ride around with it like this, like that, or fully open. Um, so if I really needed to let in air, it was, I could do it easily on the, on the bike. Now, to be honest, I usually use a tinted shield. So I don't need a tinted shield because it has an internal visor, which is really cool. You could ride around with your internal visor down, which is not recommended, but I have done. Um, with your internal visor down to let more airflow in on those really, really hot Florida days. Now, also, uh, just a little side note, I don't really ride around. I just usually sit at the light, and once I start moving, I always close my helmet. It took a bug to the eye when I first started riding, and that taught me a lesson right away. Um, swapping out the shield, pretty simple. Move the buttons forward, twist it down, twist the other one down, take off the snaps, and take it right off. Now, it's easy to take off, but putting it back on for those shield changes, you gotta hold it down, you gotta make sure you don't switch these up because then you can't lock them in place. So I, I did it because I always like going around with the gold iridium, but at night if I got caught out, I needed to switch back to the clear because this is way too dark for me to ride around in and the, the tinted one was also way too dark. So shield changes can be a little bit annoying. Am I asking much for a $250 helmet? Well, it's $240. I don't know if I'm asking too much for it because my Bell SRT, hit the button, slide it out, line it up, slide it back in. So I don't know. but. I did it, I've done it for a year, and it's just a little tedious. Back up to the vents. The vents have these really small actuators that I have small hands, and in my mesh gloves, I can find them, but I still gotta like, look for them. So that was kind of uncomfortable when I wanted to open or close the vents. And if you're wearing your thicker winter gloves, I do have thicker gloves. It does get cold enough in Central Florida to actually wear thicker gloves. and trying to find those vents when your gloves are thicker is very hard so I didn't like that about it the sound of the system the system sounds pretty good um, considering that it's the older DWO-5 which is uh, equivalent to the SMH-5 for Senna uh, it sounded pretty well I could use OK Google I can make phone calls I can be connected to three Senna riders and one non uh, Senna rider and one at a time though there is no match okay so it is an older system it does not have fm radio but you can listen to music through one of the apps on your phone what i really wanted was google communication um remember when i started writing well you don't remember i remember i didn't have any writing pals now i do and sometimes i want to talk to all of them well at least to my nefarious four girls um actually i want to talk to everybody because i just like talking but with that being said, it, it fit the bill. Now, the mic has to be like right on your face because this is a very, very noisy helmet. So if the mic is not in your face, it's gonna pick up all that wind noise and you won't be able to actually use OK Google and do all those commands. Noisy. On the highway, the wind noise is ridiculous. Even just riding around town, go, once you hit like 45, you can hear this helmet. Actually, you can hear the helmet before you hit 45. I actually ride around with earplugs, and even through the earplugs, I can still hear some of the wind noise, but it knocks it down. And if I'm on the highway, I need my earplugs so I can hear my directions. Um, I tend to, to guide a lot of our rides, and I have to have them in because I won't be able to hear where I gotta make my turns when I'm using the, the Kalimoto app that I like to use. So it's very noisy. Um, overall impression, this helmet served its purpose. It was something to keep me safe. 
Um, in the meantime, until I learned more about motorcycling helmets, more about ratings, more about what I was looking for, what I needed, or what I wanted from a ride. It's a perfect helmet for somebody who's just starting out or doesn't ride around a lot and doesn't want to break the bank in getting all this gear that they're not using often. But I think anybody who starts with this helmet will eventually upgrade from this helmet. Uh, other than that, if you have questions about this helmet, leave it below. I will answer 